Hey everyone, this is our lesson on solubility and concentration. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the phases of matter and the physical changes that they undergo. So let's first talk about concentration. So concentration um, is looking at how much is dissolved in solution. And the rate of dissolving will depend on the frequency and energy of the collisions that occur between very small particles. So um, how fast or how slow something will break down in solution. And then factors that affect um, the rate of dissolution are surface area, stirring, and temperature. So these are three big um, topics. Um, very quickly, let me say surface area. The smaller your particle, the more surface area exposed, the quicker it will dissolve. Stirring. You're allowing new um, particles to come in contact with your solute, the quicker it will dissolve. Temperature, the hotter it is, the quicker it will dissolve. Think if you make sweet tea, you always use hot water. You don't use cold water because you can dissolve. Excuse me. You can dissolve more sugar. So now let's move into concentration. So concentration is defined as the maximum amount of solute that will dissolve in a given amount of solvent at a constant temperature. Okay. Really just know it's how much solute is dissolved. Okay. And then solubility is a little more specific. It's how much is dissolved at a temperature in a given amount of solution. Concentration is, des uh, is described as a ratio of moles of solute per liter of solution. This is also known as molarity. Um, so just in case you see it on anything, let me write this. So this would be moles. Ooh, sorry. I haven't written on this thing in a while. Per liter. Or... A capital M. Sorry, that is really sloppy. A capital M. Molarity. So concentrated, if you see that about a term, concentrated means a lot of solute is dissolved. And dilute means only a little bit of solute is dissolved. And here, you know, this little gift to show you. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about solubility and how you can describe a solution based on its solubility. So you can use one of the three terms, following terms, saturated, unsaturated, or supersaturated to describe how much solute is dissolved. Saturated means you have the max amount dissolved at that temperature in that amount of solvent. Unsaturated means you have less than the maximum amount. So you have less dissolved um, at that temperature in that amount of solvent. And then supersaturated means you have more than you thought you could dissolve at that temperature in that amount of solvent. Come on. Uh, these three factors, <coughs> or we have three factors that affect solubility. And those are the polarity of the solvent. So... Polar, like like dissolves like. If it's a polar solvent, it'll dissolve polar compounds or ionic compounds, but not nonpolar. Temperature, the more the higher the temperature, the more you'll dissolve. And pressure. This one applies to gases. So the more pressure you apply, the less a gas will dissolve. No, I'm sorry, the more a gas will dissolve. They are um, directly related. So increase the pressure, increase the solubility. And this is an example I hope to do for you in class. This is called hot ice. And this is a super saturated solution. So with a super saturated solution, it'll look like a liquid. You can add what's called a seed crystal, which is what was on the little table there before this started pouring. And then it actually will cause the um, compound to come out of solution and solidify. Now let's talk about solubility curves. And... Um, we know that a solution will form more easily if the solute and solvent have the same polarity. So if they're both polar or bo both nonpolar. And this is where that like dissolves like comes into play. And then the solubility of solids increases as your temperature of the solvent increases. So we already said that. 
And then increasing pressure of a gas will increase the solubility of a liquid or in a liquid. These are all measured in concentration on a solubility curve. And when you look at a solubility curve, um, a couple of the parts are we have that it's shown as grams of solute per 100 grams of solution. So this will be your, um, your Y axis. And then your X axis is um, the temperature. If you're looking for a saturated solution, you're going to look on the line. And I'll show you what this means in a minute. Unsaturated is below the line and super saturated is above the line. So this is a, um, this is what a solubility curve looks like. So let's just look at this NaNO3 line here, okay? If I'm looking on the line right there, this is a saturated solution because I'm on the line, okay? But let's say I dissolve at, and that's at 40 degrees Celsius, that would be about, 105 grams. But let's say I dissolve 80 grams at 40 degrees Celsius. So I'm looking here. That is below the line. So that is unsaturated. Okay. Well, then let's say at 40 degrees Celsius, I actually have 130 grams dissolved of NaNO3 in 100 grams of solution. This is known as a super saturated solution because I have more than I thought I could dissolve, which would be above the line. So hopefully that makes sense. You may want to jot that down on your picture. So let's go ahead and try this example. So you'll use the curve in your notes for this. And it says, determine the type of solution formed when 120 grams of potassium iodide is dissolved at 20 degrees Celsius. So first you find Ki on the curve. You go to the 20 degrees Celsius, which is going to be your x-axis. You're going to go up to 120 on that 20 degree line. And you see where that falls in comparison to your Ki line. And when you do that, you'll see that you actually could dissolve more, which means this would be an unsaturated solution. So remember, on the line is saturated. Below is unsaturated and above is super saturated. So you go ahead, pause the video, move this back, pause the video and try this example. <laughs> 